This is Deborah Johnson for Women at Halftime, and I'm passionate about helping women use their untapped skills, resources, and talents to create their ideal work and lifestyle, making a difference in their second half. Well, hello. Great to be back with you um, again today. And today with me is Greg. Hi, everybody. Yes, so fun. And we are going to be approaching the subject, coming up with interesting conversation topics. And you may wonder why, why I'm approaching that topic, but I'll tell you uh, very soon as we dive into it. But uh, just to remind you that as this airs, Hero Mountain Summit, which is a five-month program, it actually starts today as this airs, um, this uh, episode, this show. Um, But these are five months to help uh, giving you a pacer almost to move you ahead. There's uh, specific goals that you work for during those five months. People are having a hard time starting. They're having a hard time getting going. And that's why I put that program together uh, with measurable outcomes and goals to be able to increase, uh, either start your business, increase your business, or uh, really to kind of balance your life and your business together. So it's a really great, wonderful program on that. So make sure you check that out, HeroMountainSummit.com. Uh, lots of free things always. You can always uh, look at my website. I have a number of things going on. So we are going to um, approach this because we have noticed, especially uh, in our parents as they you know, we've said goodbye to them in the last five years, but they found um, the conversations ended up being, you know, about doctor's appointments and all sorts of other, you know, things related, you know, going to, you know, medical and, and uh, all of those sort of things. And we thought, you know, they ended up being kind of shallow and focusing on the same things. So, we thought, how, how do we expand our ability uh, as we gracefully grow uh, older? We have plenty more, of course, years. Um, but we wanted to be, de- be developing that not only as a couple, but with other people. So um, we decided it would be fun to expand a little bit in a couple different areas. And so expanding our knowledge base with our reading and listening to podcasts. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to have Greg share some things about this and things that he's reading and and why he's reading those and how we can approach them together and talking to them about them together. So Greg, why don't you um, uh, talk about a couple things that you are reading and pursuing right now? Um. Well, so, so it seems like as I've gotten older, I've started to enjoy history more. Um, just understanding where I came from, where the nation came from, um, history's influence on, on how the nation's grappling with ideas. So um, one book I read last year that I'm rereading kind of constantly was called uh, A History of the Left, and it sort of picked up real heavy uh, just before the French Revolution and the philosophers of the Enlightenment that influenced uh, the thinking of the French Revolution and then uh, followed it uh, kind of through Europe through the 19th century and then uh, as it jumped to America in the 20th century and um, yeah that's been interesting especially trying to uh, understand uh, what's going on in our country right now, <clears throat> and um, simultaneous to that, uh, I have some uh, Cherokee and Chata Indian heritage, and um, one of our presidents had an impact on both those tribes, and that was Andrew Jackson. And um, you know, Jackson, when I was growing up, was you know a hero. He's on the twenty dollar bill. And um, and yet, recent scholarship seems to be challenging that. So I, I read two sides of the coin. One was called Jackson Land, and that was um, kind of a, a view that Jackson just kind of wanted to take over. And then another one was called In Defense of Jackson. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, being able to balance all that out um, was was interesting. <laughs> 
Yes, that's great to hear. You know, and Greg reads different things, but I, I think I wanted to approach a couple of those things that he's reading because it gives us things to talk about. Not that I'm, you know, engulfed in history as much, but it does repeat itself, and it's just really kind of interesting. And I read more uh, business books and things uh, related to that and stuff. I love to read, you know, how people made it, of course. So um, I have a couple of real favorites. Shoe Dog was wonderful by uh, Phil Knight. But I also read Call Me Ted by Ted Turner, Cable Cowboy, John Malone, uh, uh, Memories, Memoirs of a Geisha, Geisha. That was fascinating. I had never read that. Some people read that years ago. But I uh, actually, I listened to the audio book. And another audiobook, The Giver of Stars, which is also uh, fiction, but it was based on um, the uh, in Kentucky and uh, library and on these women that uh, went ahead and delivered books. It was fascinating. It was based on that. And because I'm writing, I need to read. I remember you really liked the biography of Disney. Yes, love that. It was mm-hmm. very long. The audiobook was very yeah. long, and I read read shorter books. But this one was like 30 hours long. But it was fascinating because it went into a lot of the details and how much work they put behind and the failures that they had to overcome. So those are just really good right. to be able to talk about. But my, my whole um, kind of purpose in bringing a lot of this up, and I'll put some of these resources in the, um, the show notes and in the article. I'll put a lot of links to some of these books so our, oh, our listeners can uh, pursue you know, a couple things, at least look at them. Uh, I love that when, when I'm able to find new, new books that are not just all the same uh, books. And, uh, but it gives us things to talk about because even though I'm not this huge history buff, um, the things that you mentioned about those historical books are fascinating as we look at well, today. Yeah, and it's, um, what we're sharing is new ways of looking at old things. Yes. Uh, whether it's a new way of looking at business or it's a new way of looking at what's going on in our country. Um, it, it, it's kind of like if your brain is a, a uh, bubbling brook mm-hmm. and there's fresh water coming up all the time, then there's always something new to talk about. Right, right. And ideas tend to not go in a linear way. They, they tend to crawl along and then all of a sudden the accumulation of three weeks worth of stuff, you know, burst into a huge idea. <laughs> and that ends up, you know, being, you know, really fun stuff to talk about because that'll give you a whole week's worth of Subjects. Conversations. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. And um, and something that we do, uh, I'll talk about this, uh, our next point is consistent time, but we consistently make time to talk yeah. as well. And it's not always deep things. It's just, you know, what we've what we've been reading or studying. And podcasts are pretty much the same thing. Or YouTube. Yes. Yeah. Those are very, very similar because... What are, what are some podcasts you're listening to? Oh, I, I really like... <laughs> um, Mixergy is really fun because it's always talking about how I made it, how, you know, that sort of thing. I've gotten into... Um, because I'm a professional speaker, Speakernomics is really great. And um, Making Waves at the Sea, sea Level. Uh, Tom Singer does those. And I just really like his style. Uh, of how he uh, does interviews, problem solvers is is really fun, and I uh, was able to listen to a great episode. Uh, I think it might have been on Mixergy with Chip Gaines. Oh, it might have been on another one because I've listened to Donald Miller and you know some of those as well. But he's a the Joanna and Chip. You know, I remember you really liked the I've, Chip Gaines one really liked it because he was basically they were they were facing bankruptcy and what were they going to do and they i mean they have such a strong mission and purpose in what they're doing mm-hmm. and and things really turned around when they really started focusing on that and they started getting the opportunities and they give back so much to the community it's just a real 
um, heartwarming and how successful they've been. But it's been with the principles that they've applied. I just uh, I felt like it was just you know it was a wonderful interview. So and he's kind of the off the wall guy, you know. But right. uh, but it was it was a very very uh, good interview and spent a lot of time as well on the interview. So that was that was a really good. It might have been on the Entrepreneur Magazine uh, one, which I which I like. Um, so that uh, I, I listen to a bunch of it. It depends yeah, on what so the subject is. <laughs> one of the ones that I've liked the most recently is one put up by Brett Johnson mm. on um, how the Federal Reserve's quantitative easing program really works. And trying to explain that to Deb. And, uh, but it, if you've got the time, it's about an hour long. Um, um, but he, he makes the case that uh, what the Federal Reserve is doing is actually responding to deflation. And ah. right now, as we're talking, uh, the world kind of is worried about inflation because of all the money printing. Right. Um, but, you know, nothing's really changing. And we got underlying deflation that's going on. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and that's kind of what the Fed's responding to. I think another uh, another fascinating thing is uh, you can find all sorts of podcasts of uh, <clears throat> debates between people who believe in Bitcoin and mm -hmm. people who believe in gold. Mm -hmm. And um, that is probably worth understanding because eventually you, inflation is going to take over. Yeah. And uh, cash is going to become worth less. Mm -hmm. And uh, you need to have a store of value somewhere. Right. Um, so those have been interesting podcasts for me to, to consume. And, uh, and, and I hope our listeners are understanding the variety behind all of this now. Because you went from history and uh, to uh, Andrew Jackson from the, you know, your background, uh, Indian. And now all the way to cryptocurrency and, you know, inflation right. and the financial market. And we talk about all of this. And I have actually, it's, it's sparked my interest because I want to understand enough of it. It's almost like me in sports, right? right. I, I, want to stand and, I want to understand enough of it so I can go and, and enjoy it. So I'm not just totally lost in, in, in our conversation. And it's pushing both of us to keep our minds a little sharper. And I always say music keeps your mind sharper, but also reading does and discussion. Yeah. So all of these things together. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, your father was just such a brilliant man. He he read huge stacks of magazines. Like every week, he would he would give us those magazines. I don't know what there was all, but you know, you'd read many of the same. But when he stopped reading, I mean, his mind started degrading. And right. I think it both went hand in hand mm -hmm. with the dementia, but. It was just, it, it was it's such a strange thing. He just right. stopped reading, you know, and uh, so all of that. And just because you read, if you don't ask each other questions yeah. and then actually listen to the answers of those questions mm -hmm. to see if you understand what the other person's saying. Yes. Uh, it doesn't really continue to fuel conversations. You, right. you, you have, if I ask Deb, um, something about a new business concept mm -hmm. and all I do is go, uh-huh. Uh huh. Um, you know that it one one doesn't help her because if I don't quite get it, then she didn't explain it thoroughly. Which a lot of times, if you can't explain a, a new concept, mm -hmm. then you yourself don't quite get it. So yeah. you know we do each other favors by uh, drilling down and um, and really understanding each other. Yeah, I mean, that is so important. I mean, we've talked about in business, your branding statements and all of that, but even things that you read, how important it is to be able to, because it's, uh, there's so many times I read something and you'll say, oh, what was that? Where are you in the book? And it's like, oh, I don't quite remember. Where I left off. Or, you know, something didn't stand up. But when I know that we're going to have a conversation about it, and uh, I mean, something too, I mean, this is in our little second point of here of taking time to talk because most mornings, unless one of us has an appointment, which happens, uh, we have time together to talk, coffee time. Mm -hmm. And um, so love my cappuccinos. But I do a lot of things before that because I work out early and all of that. But uh, this is a consistent time just to hang out. 
and we spend time over meals and everything too. But turning off a lot of the other distractions and to say, you know, where are you at? What are you reading? What are you doing? And what did you listen to? Or, right. you know, whatever. So, but I think that was that point of consistent time for conversation. Yeah, you got to have time. You know, I remember one of the rules we lived by raising kids mm-hmm. was uh, it wasn't quality time over quantity time because... Mm-hmm. The problem is, is without quantity time, yeah, you never know when quality time is going to pop up. Right, you know, it's impossible to schedule quality time. Right, but if you schedule in enough quantity time, mm-hmm. um, you'll end up enjoying lots of quality time. Yes, yes. But you got to be consistent on the quantity of time. Right, right, and uh, and I think your point too about asking questions, because many people just let something drop. And yeah, go right. further, and, and that's a real art to develop too. Is yeah, asking questions, yep. and, and it makes you feel like, okay, now I've read something you're really interested in. It. You, it's not like just okay, how was it? Or yeah, know. I mean the difference between you saying something and I'm going, uh huh. Yes. Really. Yeah. <laughs> and, and versus a follow up question mm-hmm. is uh, the difference between being engaged and. Uh, low-key ignoring you right right and i think that's just a great quote for this is the follow-up questions and how to develop those and uh for me having enough interest and knowing enough about the uh cryptocurrency and the cyber coins and all of that at least to ask some questions and to say you're putting your wallet together but but you you have a tell so when your eyes cross Yes, I, I, I do. know that I sort of need to take another shot at it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you can tell we've been together a very long time. Yeah, it's it, that's very true. If you go too much in depth, you, you lost me. So uh, yeah, we know each other on that. But I don't. I definitely don't do that with music scores either. So mm. or, or anything mm. or or even in uh, my writing. Sometimes I'm not going to go into deep uh, detail on this. So uh, anyway. So, but that's that consistent time. So expanding the knowledge base, we've covered reading and listening to podcasts. Those are great ways to do that, of course, and making time to talk and uh, turning off distractions, not only just to talk, but to ask questions. But then um, let's let's talk about expanding our group of contacts okay. and um, of our, not only just our friendships, but contacts and how... Those really help us in coming up with interesting conversation topics as well. And in gen- different generations, networking groups, and just people that we, we meet. So, um, and with gen- different generations, like we had a couple over the other night that are, they're like our kids' ages. Or maybe, All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had a, an amazing time, just a fantastic time. There was a lot of respect both sides. And, but it was fascinating because she had, um, you know, come from even from a different country and, and being here and uh, to hear what her background was, still in leadership and very capable. It was just fun to get to know them and to realize that we will have a certain amount of effect on them of their you know, um, of their lives, of being able to watch our relationship. They'd only been married a couple of years. But also, um, they will, and we will end up learning from them. And and I think there's that uh, reciprocity. Is that the right way to say yes, that? Yes. Uh-huh. So good. But in, in having different generations, I remember your mom saying, well, all of our friends have died. Yeah. Uh, how sad that was. Right. And even if you don't develop some of this uh, on your own, not just your kids' friends and, you know, how many parties have we had here with our, you know, kids having their friends, but they're not our friends, you know? Right. So developing, and people that we tend to get along with, you know, pretty well. So, um, and uh, you have any more to add on to well, that? Well, I think one, one thing that's true with friends, if um, you want to make them valuable, is, is mm-hmm. you got to figure out how to get their opinion yes. out of themselves Mm -hmm. and um, most people are more than willing to share their opinion once they feel like it's safe yeah and um, but you know you you gotta realize that most of us never get asked our opinion so if if we get asked our opinion 
then we're put we're kind of put off guard. Yeah. Because it's like, wait, why why would you care what I think? Yeah. So you sort of have <laughs> to sneak out, and um, <laughs> it, it, you know, in in order for relationships to be valuable, they, they need to be able to add something. Yeah. You know, if your new set of friends, you know, just all say the same things that you say, mm -hmm. they haven't really added anything. It's those things where they're just a little bit different in you you know right. you don't you don't want them being 180 degrees different yeah um, um because you can't coexist right but um most people have a slightly different view of life than you, you do as a couple right and um, learning to appreciate that uh and to appreciate it enough that you explore it yes so i'm trying to think uh, with that couple um uh we were talking in general about, uh, let's say, taxation in England, mm -hmm. and um, and she was just kind of bamfing on what her life, you know, had been like, and what people over there thought about things, and um, so she's obviously willing to share the subject. It isn't. Her opinion, it's her observation. Mm -hmm. But if you want to go deeper, you, you, you go when um, um, the Queen of England, uh, you know, was basically attacked by Meghan Markle. How did most of England, you know, respond to that? And and, and here's the important part: What did you think? Yes. So when you get to what did you think? Mm -hmm. And they've already they've already laid out that they're interested in that subject. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she probably went on for ten minutes. About yes, what she thought, <laughs> and, and you know, it it gave us great insight. Yes, you know, we didn't she know. Was, yeah, and we're she, not from England. You know, yeah, and she uh, was. She and, knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, very, <clears throat> very interesting. I think that's a, a really a great point too. <clears throat> but then they become a valuable you know, source to us, yes. and they also gave us stuff to talk about. Yes, definitely. And uh, to expand the relationship a little bit, and just you know, and, and what they're involved in, and what we're involved in, and yeah, you know, uh, yeah. when you ask somebody what they think, mm -hmm. you, you become a valuable person to them. Yes, yes, and it's not just what they do; it's what they think. Yes, I think what that's they think. the yeah. Um, that's that's important because. There's not often that I'm asked what I think. You know, it's just not that often. I ask you. You do. Okay. <laughs> you do, definitely. And I'm at a loss many times. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's others, you know, networking group. I think net, people are craving networking right now because Zoom only does so much. They want to be together. and But there's all sorts of these little programs coming up. There's another, another one that I was just... Uh, asked to be on and uh, you know just to you know get to know each other or network you know how much are you going to get to know somebody in five minutes and but but it's still you know keeping contacts alive because a lot of those groups you know my national speaking association or, or chapter group i i've not been able to see those people i just want to be yeah, be right. and uh chamber of commerce groups um you know community groups and one of the things we've been able to be um you know, expanding our contacts a little bit, and this is along the next little lines of activities, but it's playing pickleball. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of some unexpected relationships. We just had another couple over last night that uh, were from Kentucky, just moved here very recently. We had a blast. Yeah. And got to hear, you know, about them going to the Kentucky Derby. And I've been to the, I've never been to the Derby. I've just been to the location and the museum. But... But it was really fun in developing that sort of conversation, and if we ever get to go, I'll just you know. Yeah, um, there's a there's yeah, it's not new anymore. It's been around ten years. Things called meetup groups. And yes. If you haven't used one yet, mm -hmm. you can just type in meetup in your um, mm -hmm. zip code. Right. And it'll give you a list of all sorts of groups. Right. That just randomly meet up. Right. And everything from a jogging group. To yeah. a quilting group, yes. in our case, a pickleball group. Yes, <laughs> and um, 
you know, in our uh, our case, it, when it started, it was all beginners. Yes. And uh, we've been doing it probably six months, so we're you know almost intermediate yeah. now. <laughs> um, well, you might be. <laughs> but um, you know, you, you can. You, all you have to do is be willing to meet other people who are willing to meet other people. Yes. Because that's what a meetup group is. But yeah. um, you'd be surprised. I, I hope you go online. Yeah. Yeah. How many groups there are? Yes. Yes. And um, and, and you know, when, and when somebody posts a group uh, on meetup, they're they're basically saying anybody's welcome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a very inclusive feel. Very, so, very. Yeah. Uh, bike riding groups, yeah. surf groups, um, uh, Italian cooking groups. Yes. You know, yes. It, yeah. It, and and one thing here too, I want to mention: if there's groups like that, you have to be willing to come in as a beginner. Yes. Because playing pickleball, I, I was never really even though. I did take tennis lessons. I, I did take swimming lessons. All those things. But it's not into my core competency. So, you know, I'll always say, oh, I'm still a beginner. But it, it was like we just played yesterday. And I feel like I'm actually getting better. I was able to, like, really return some great hits. And and it was, it was, it was fun for me. But it's been a little while. And it's getting to know people like they're going to be okay. Because I played with some very good players yesterday, too. And I'm feeling, well, okay, they're, it's it's going to be okay. They were very kind and here giving me some clues. And it just, it helps develop those friendships. And multi-generational as well. This is not... Right. You know, it yeah. was definitely mm-hmm. multi-generational. So that was that was really, really fun. So and other groups, I mean, we can meet people. Many people will find not only in meetups, but like churches and those sort of community church groups. Uh, you were in a wine tasting group. I mean... <laughs> Right. Yes. right. And uh, and that uh, demographic of that was a little older, and we if we just kept to that group, that would be tough. You know? Yeah, because we would definitely be old with no friends. Yes, <laughs> yes. They will all die off. Yes, yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. So, but it's a great group. It's yeah. just a really fun group, and um, you had a little workout buddy on one of those too, which is fun. So. But yeah, all of those help to in different areas. So we're not just focused on one. It gives me things to talk about. It gives me ideas, which I'm usually not short of too many ideas of things to do. But it, it really does for subjects that are important and interesting um, at this, especially at the halftime, officially over the age of 40 for any of you listeners that wonder what that is. It comes very, very fast. So... Um, and then activities we will cover here too. Oh, I wanted to talk about, I'm going to go back to one thing and then we're going to talk about activities because one thing that we have done is our personal uh, devotion. And I want you to talk about that for a moment because it's something I, um, we both are avid, um, with our, with our backgrounds. We like to spend a little time in our devotions and journal in the morning and I read the Bible. So uh, why don't you talk about uh, the little program that you had me join, and it's been really wonderful this year. Yeah, something that I've been doing for about four years is called the Self Feeder. And uh, basically it's just a little journal, and it leaves room for you to write down, uh, you know, I think one of the questions is, what was the breakthrough thought? Why was this meaningful? What are you going to do about it? It was just real simple. Very simple. And it, and you read one chapter of the New Testament a day, and that'll get it. You'll get through it like in about eleven months. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I've been doing it for about four years. So this Christmas, I uh, asked Deb if she would do it with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, just give us something else to read together, and. Um, so, you know, we're up through like two-thirds of the Book of Acts now. And um, um, it's just, you know, it, it's easy. Mm-hmm. Um, it, uh, you know, reading a whole book, one chapter at a time, uh, mm-hmm. supplies a context. Yeah, it does. It, a lot yeah. of times if you just look at a passage, mm-hmm. you don't get the context of the yeah. whole book and the themes yeah. A lot of themes. We're, we're surprised, like in the book of Acts, 
how the, the theme of rioting just keeps oh, coming up. Over, over and, and over and over, and over, and over again. again. <laughs> it's like, is this for today or <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah. yeah. The reason I really wanted to bring this up is that we've talked about all the separate things we're doing. And this is something that I had been doing my own thing. And it's such a simple little thing of just walking away with one. That's all it does is just say yeah, what, it's one 10 thing. Or 15 minutes it's a day, maybe. Very short. And we really, honestly, we talk about this every day, and it's just five minutes. But it's it's given us another connection point of something we're doing together. Right. And and I thought that was really a, a really good you know choice to do because I. You know, I had not been doing that same sort of uh, little program. I was doing my own thing. You know, I always got my own thing. But I've really, really enjoyed this because of the conversations that we've had and because there's nothing new under the sun. It's just like reading history. It's just the history, history. It's the same stuff. goes over and over the same stuff. So... Well, um, yeah, maybe that's why there wasn't the book of Acts chapter or volume two. Yes. It was, it was like volume two just said, see, yeah. see volume, volume one. Volume one, more writing. No, <laughs> 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 kind of interesting. So uh, kind of to, and then I'll sum this up, but when actually we have a couple more things because new activities, another new activity that we did this year was snowshoeing. And it gave us something to talk about because, and to train for together. Yeah, right. And, and but really, because... You know, when we started doing this snowshoeing, I thought it was, you know, putting those tennis rackets on our feet and all of that. And and as soon as our little instructor said, oh, no, those are the really old ones. I'm thinking, oh, that's, you know, we were watching all those cartoons just with that. So, um, but it was a lot different. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And it was, it really gave us something to talk about. In fact, in our little pickleball game, we had everybody asking us about it yesterday. And so it was fun. It gave us more to talk about with other people when they were asking asking us questions because they were curious and how hard it was. How about dog sledding? Oh, dog sledding was another thing. Yes, yes. So exploring some of these new things, and they don't always have to cost a lot or do, you know, you have to go every, but it gives you something else to be able to talk about with that conversation, Uh, interesting conversation. It makes you an interesting person, you know, Uh, and not just talking about one thing, because I tell you, not very many people ask me about music or about speaking, (laughs) but they will ask me about dog sledding and about (laughs) about snowshoeing. Yeah, definitely. So... Um, and, and I'm going to kind of end this. We've talked mm-hmm. about uh, expanding our knowledge base with books and podcasts and all of that and taking the time to talk, expanding our contacts and trying new activities, not being afraid of those, but also to have a lifelong learner attitude. Mm-hmm. I think the attitude is, is very, very important in this because uh, taking some risks. I, I think, you know, people are, it was, you know, these... Right as we are, uh, I've been doing this a couple times now with the mind games, five day challenge, and then I have mindset, you know, right, hot, right, I've got right. some webinars and all that. But w- people are afraid to start, they're afraid to take a risk. And and one of the comments I said today, you know, is, is uh, people at this point um, are afraid they've been wearing masks. They're afraid to take the mask off. Well, they're afraid to try anything new. Afraid, to, and at some point we want to be prudent, but you got to go on. You got to, you know, take some risks, read something new, a, a new contact, or listen to something different, or try a new activity. So, um, do you have any little no, comments but, on that? Or yeah, I mean, yeah, and probably you should make that normative. Yes. Um, it's kind of like changing your diet. You know, yeah, yeah. Let's say you're going to skip ice cream and you start eating fruit. Right. And you know, at first it feels really odd. But, right. you know, um, after 30, 60 days, it yeah. becomes normative. Right. And, um, you know, e- even stuff you're you know, currently doing, like Deb rides the stationary bike probably five days a week. Um, but uh, just to change it up, she's been doing... Longer rides and mm-hmm. um, throwing in twenty uh, percent of the ride, doing it harder than she normally would. Right. Well, that that little bit of change right. is uh, you know a mindset uh, right. fix. Right. 
So, and it's good, mm-hmm. and it's it, that change is good for the body. And I've started doing yoga as well. But it's but it's even better for the mind. It's totally better for the mind because in that attitude of going toward yoga, I'm not very flexible. Right. Never been able to pick, you know, touch my toes. But any yoga teacher will tell you, oh, it's not just all about flexibility. No, it's about balance and all of those other things. And I'm thinking, that's what I want, <laughs> you know. And it's this gradual, be willing to try it. And, you know, little, I've told you, little by little, I feel like, oh, I am getting a little bit more yep, flexible. Yep. And and I can pace myself. And there's really not much more encouraging news than to realize that, wait, today yeah. was different. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And actually, the ride that I just did today, because we were starting on these, uh, we're doing. I'm doing. I love this one instructor because we're doing actual stuff that they do on the Tour de France, and uh, with these rides, and with all of the, you know, they make it tough <laughs> on your attention and everything else. But it. Um, but what it's done, I've built up to this. He'd actually be a good guy for your podcast you really would because yeah actually i'll have to do it'll be a surprise for your listeners if i ever get him he would be really really fascinating so yeah definitely so well this has been really fun talking about expanding our knowledge base taking the time to talk you gotta turn off those distractions consistent time there expanding your group of contacts of people not being afraid to be in different groups um, new activities and that lifelong learner. And I think that is, it's, it's a habit of our life. It's a daily attitude that we come forward to that. So, well, Greg, do you have any closing no, comments? No, I yeah. think we, we got to wrap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was just a, a, you know, we both looked at this subject and thought, oh, these, these, we're doing all of these. These, are, these. We can really approach these together. And I like to be able to present things together that really, really, we really are doing together, not only for those in a significant relationship, you know, ours is a marriage relationship, but for many years, but those even with um, colleagues and friends and how you can encourage each other on that. I have several different small groups that I am always throwing out, you know, new things I'm reading and new inspiration for them. It gives me more to give and, yeah. it, and it's really fun yeah. with that. So, you know, one we could do together would be really easy. What's cause, that? Because we do it together. It's yeah. How to spoil a puppy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. If you saw Greg right now with, <laughs> with our little dog <laughs> oh. right behind his neck, if you've heard these uh, that's yeah. that's Amelia. So our little dog is. She's, but we do it together. Yes, you, yeah. It'd be easy we, to talk about. Yeah, it would be very easy <laughs> to talk about. So, <laughs> well, make sure you tune in to next week because I am going to be talking about habits. It's 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 getting back into a regular routine. Now I'm all about routine, and uh, I break the routine. But I'm all about getting back onto that routine. Sometimes it's really hard to get back on, though. And if you've skipped a couple days, four days, five days of working out, do you know how hard it is to get back? Yeah, it is very hard. But it's a routine even of our life. that it's. Uh, we'll talk about that next week. Uh, WomenAtHalftime.com. You can subscribe, of course. Listen, share this. Write reviews. Would love to hear from you. You can get it on, of course, Apple Podcasts and all the others as well. And just thank you so much for listening, and I will look forward to being with you next time. Thank you for joining us on Women at Halftime. Visit goalsforyourlife.com or womenathalftime.com for many more resources, downloads, and programs, or to get in touch with me. I'd love it if you leave me a review and tell your friends. So until next time, this is Deborah Johnson signing off.